All right, thanks, Tim. So basically, the rough agenda is we're going to do a, a shortish presentation, just give you some highlights, uh, and then we're going to throw open to Q&A. So Tim will manage the Q&A, and we'll do our best to answer those questions for the rest of the session. Now, as Tim mentioned, this is going to be a series of presentations uh, over the next couple of months. The idea is that the focus is on helping you understand better what Microsoft 365 business is. So we're going to talk about the product in general. We're going to talk about uh, some of the specific uh, technologies that are part of this offering and hopefully give you some insight, firstly, into what those technologies are, how to use them, and where they can fit into uh, the business for your clients. Now, to start off with, uh, Microsoft 365 Business is a product now that has been in market for roughly uh, 12 months. And again, it's a product that is undergoing change on a regular basis. Now, Microsoft have their uh, big uh, Ignite conference, the IT Pro conference, coming at the end of September. We expect to see a lot more updates and improvements and announcements around this product. So again, stay tuned. This is the advantage of obviously having a number of these sessions uh, across the next couple of months. You can make sure that you're across any of the changes that we expect to see to make this an even more uh, enticing product. Now, I'd assume that between the sessions, again, if you want to ask any questions or something uh, does pop up, make sure that you uh, contact Dicker and let them know. and We can look to uh, cover that uh, in the upcoming sessions. But for this session today, what we want to do is just give you a bit of an overview for those people who may not know a lot about uh, Microsoft 365 Business. So the very first thing to appreciate is that Microsoft 365 Business uh, is a separate product, a separate SKU uh, from your traditional Office 365. So if you've been selling Office 365, that's great, but now we have an additional option with additional features uh, that you can go out and sell and uh, build managed services around for your customers. So if I move the slide along here, basically you need to have a think about where most customers are in their technology life cycle these days. What we're seeing is, is that a great amount of customers are still using very, very old style technologies. They're still using things like Windows 7, even SPS is uh, still out there. Remember that a lot of these systems have uh, next to no support or very minimal support. The major thing they don't uh, have basically uh, is uh, something around something around uh, the ability to work in the modern environment here. So the modern environment means typically things like using Windows 10, being able to connect to Office 365 easily, having single sign-on across all your applications. Connecting to things like Azure AD is going to give additional functionality, potentially allow you to do things like conditional access and also allow you to push down um, policies and control using uh, things like Intune rather than group policy. So what we see out there is a very common scenario where we have customers that believe what they have is good enough. Uh, generally, that is fine uh, until they get infected by CryptoLocker or some piece of malware. Uh, so having up-to-date systems, again, is one of the major defenses you should have against uh, these modern-day uh, infections. And again, it's going to give you this additional functionality. You know, users need to be able to do all this stuff um, that they're going to uh, desire these days. So they're going to want to be able to create, you know, nice looking uh, pages. They want to be able to send uh, emails. They want to be able to work in groups. They want to have chat. They want to have social inside their business. And the older tools just simply don't provide that. The other side of the coin when it comes to devices is that many PCs have been purchased over a period of time. They've got a multiple arrangement of operating systems. They've got a multiple arrangement of desktop software, productivity software. That, again, uh, probably isn't consistent across the organization. That's creating frustrations, and that's preventing the users from, again, doing a consistent job for the organization. And many people are looking at very different style of uh, solutions here. So you go into many businesses who may have Office 365, but they are using third-party uh, storage products. They're using you know, maybe some Google products. They're using some uh, third-party uh, application to manage some of their mobile fleet. And this, again, makes it difficult, more complicated, and potentially more expensive to do this. So the opportunity here is, is to bring a consistent 
uh, environment to all of the, these uh, customers to give them uh, what's modern, up to date, and also give you the ability to be able to go in and manage these things uh, much better. All right, so in essence, Microsoft 365 uh, is broken up into three major uh, silos here. So we have Microsoft 365 Enterprise, we have Microsoft 365 Business, and there is also an education SKU. So in the, edu in the enterprise, we have uh, three offerings. So we have an E5, an E3, and an F1. So you'll see that these are very similar to what has been available in uh, Office 365, all right? So they do line up in a lot of cases, which we'll see as we go a bit further along. The one we're gonna focus on here is the middle one. So we're going to major focus on Microsoft 365 Business. There is only one SKU of that to make things easier. But again, if the sessions in here, um, if the feature set doesn't suit you, then you, again, do have options uh, in the enterprise area. So Microsoft 365 Business is built on the foundation of Office 365 Business Premium. All right, so you should be very familiar with that, hopefully. So that's gonna give you Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, OneNote on the desktop. It's going to give you the online services, Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, OneDrive, Teams, and that, and also the unique third-party apps to Microsoft 365 Business, being things like Bookings and the Outlook Customer Manager. Now, we add to this the additional security options that have typically been available in products like EMS, the Enterprise Mobility Suite. So what we're going to see is we're going to get tools like Intune that are going to allow us to manage this environment remotely, manage it from the cloud. We're going to be able to manage not only Windows desktops, but also iOS and Android devices. We're going to get the ability to encrypt documents and do things like forcing multi-factor authentication, restricting copy and paste, and again, implementing things like uh, rights management and so on, okay? So we're going to get business premium plus these features, plus we also now get uh, the ability, again, to manage the devices with a simplified admin. So we get things like Autopilot. If you haven't seen Autopilot, that will certainly be a session that we will be covering down the track. It basically allows you to deploy uh, Windows 10 out of the box experience. So a user buys a new PC, opens it up, they log in with their Azure AD credentials, and then they are logged in to Office 365. The software is pushed down to them. It is then configured based on the policies you set at the back end. Now you'll notice that we also get the mobile device management for Windows 10, Android, iOS, Mac, uh, and that will be delivered through Intune. So you get a full version of Microsoft Intune to allow you to manage all devices, whether they're mobile or on the desktop. And you also get an additional range of compliance features. So archiving, you get a legal hold, uh, you get all these additional compliance features that are becoming uh, more in demand now based on things like the national data breach legislation. So all customers need to be aware of their compliance requirements and needs, and these services do allow that. Now you'll also notice that if it's of benefit, you will receive uh, an upgrade from a Windows 7 Pro or Windows 8 Pro to Windows 10 Pro at no additional cost. So you get business premium, the security, you get the device management, and also if it makes sense, you will get the Windows 10 Pro that you can upgrade, again, Windows 7 Pro or Windows 8 Pro. So Microsoft 365 Business is a combination of all of these products bundled up into a single SKU. So when you purchase the SKU, you apply it to your Office 365 tenant and your users, as you've always done with Office 365, and then they will then have the features that are part of that SKU, which will include things like advanced threat protection. They will include the ability to do Windows information protection and device management with Intune. So again, Microsoft 365 Business is Office 365 plus these additional options. So again, it's going to include all the good stuff that came with Office 365. It's going to get Word, Excel, PowerPoint on the desktop, so it's still going to get the desktop apps. You'll get the email, the calendaring, which you can work and share calendars, the most common workload that people need. You can share calendars, shared mailboxes, all that sort of stuff. We get file storage, so we get the ability for users to store their documents, their personal documents, in at least one terabyte of storage using OneDrive for Business. We get the ability to now protect our data, so we can now embed permissions inside our documents effectively to protect them no matter where they go on the internet. We can protect them inside Teams, we can protect them inside OneDrive, 
we can encrypt the emails, we can do all that sort of stuff. So we do get very good data protection controls. We also obviously get the latest version of Windows 10. The aim should be is to have all the desktops at the latest release. This means moving them typically from Windows 7 and 8.1 to an environment where they are up to date, current and less vulnerable to today's malware. Speaking of malware, again, the vast majority of malware is typically going to be attempted to be delivered using email, so we need enhanced email protection. This is generally provided by the Advanced Threat Protection, ATP service, that is part of Microsoft 365 business. And again, because we're able to apply this from an administration uh, point of view, either through the web or through uh, something like Azure in the back end with Intune, and of course you can still use PowerShell as well as a, probably the best way to deploy things. And again, you get the same uptime, the dependability that we've come to expect with uh, Office 365. So the idea here is we're aiming Microsoft 365 business as a single solution. We're looking at potentially replacing some third party products you may be using to give you better integration. This is a matter of assessment as to, okay, what makes sense here? But again, when you look at a lot of the features that are included in a Windows environment, you're going to get that ability to manage all of this from end to end. So the big advantage here is this end to end management with the productivity. So Office 365 gives you your productivity generally around SharePoint teams, and then Microsoft 365 Business is going to allow the management of the users, their identities, as well as devices they are using. So again, which one's right for your customer? Is Office 365 going away? No, Office 365 will continue to function and serve a purpose, and it can be mixed and matched with Microsoft 365 Business. The reason is, is that Office 365 allows you still to buy individual SKUs. So you can buy just Exchange Online or maybe just SharePoint. Um, Microsoft 365 Business is a bundled SKU. So again, Microsoft 365 Business is aimed typically at the SMB customer, up to 300 users, includes a combination of management security and Windows 10. And then if your needs go beyond this, there is the Microsoft 365 Enterprise SKU. So the, one of the major differences between the the business and the enterprise generally is the enterprise SKUs give you the uh, voice capability. So give you the ability to do cloud PBX and the hopefully not too far away full PSTN uh, connectivity as well. All right, so there are basically three ways to think about this Office 365 as you've always known it. That will continue. Microsoft 365 Business, which is a combination um, of a number of products. And above that, giving you the full suite is going to be Microsoft 365 Enterprise. So what are we going to be able to do with the product? Well, we get Outlook, we get Exchange as we always have, we get the business, uh, we, that's going to be part of the SKU. We've got Office 365 groups to manage our environments. We're still going to be able to collaborate using Word, Excel, PowerPoint. So again, don't forget that all these products support document co-authoring, multi -au multiple authors at the same time. They can be stored in OneDrive for Business, shared from OneDrive for Business. They can be put into SharePoint, shared with SharePoint and the team, again, we've got that ability to work with individual files and group files and build into an intranet collaboration solution. Again, we also get the mobile apps. So again, there are mobile apps for all the devices. Uh, one of the ones I certainly recommend you take a look at that has been updated quite regularly is the OneDrive for Business app. So one of the things they announced recently was the fact that you'll now be able to have your photos automatically uploaded uh, into OneDrive for Business on iOS, and we expect Android not to be far away. So again, these products are changing and updating on a regular basis, and it's important, again, to make sure that you give your customers that experience on the mobile as well as the desktop. Again, we can work offline. We have the ability to do files on demand now. We can work in the web. We can work in Windows 10 apps. We can work on Macs. We can work on all sorts of areas now on our devices because they're all available generally through the cloud. Now, one of the important updates, obviously, is this product called Microsoft Teams. If you haven't had a look at Teams yet, then you probably should go and have a look. Uh, basically, it gives you the collaboration of SharePoint with files and folders, but also the chat capabilities, so something similar along the lines of Slack, but again, in a simple single interface that works on a mobile device as well as works uh, in a web browser. So again, Teams is a very core part of the Microsoft strategy going forward. It will continue and improve an update, but it is part of the Microsoft 365 business offering.
And importantly, like I said, the security is now going to follow the user. We know users have multiple devices. They have phones. They have desktops. They have all sorts of things. They all need to be protected based on a single login that the user has with Azure AD. I'd also commend you to have a look at uh, Windows Hello. So again, the ability to have camera verification. So you can just look at the uh, device and it logs you automatically into your Azure AD is extremely powerful and makes users' life much easier. Now, from a management point of view, we've got the ability to do selective wipe of just corporate data. We've got full wipe capabilities once we put those devices under management. So if they get lost, there's no need to go and declare data breach because those uh, devices are encrypted, potentially, if you set the policy, and then you can also do wiping of that information. We can also look at reducing the risk. So this is one of the main points for most businesses. They need to look at reducing their risk. They're running greater risk if they've got out-of-date systems, their systems aren't managed, their devices uh, don't conform to policies, they're not protected. So this is a great area that customers really need. It's going to protect them and reduce their risk as something that uh, IT providers can go in and talk to the customer directly and will resonate with them. So we also get things like information protection, which we'll talk about in another session. We get app protection, we get uh, trusted boot, we get Windows Defender. So all of that is integrated. This is the big positive of the system. It's all integrated. As I mentioned, we've got Windows Autopilot, which allows you to deploy the machines automatically out of the box, giving the user a seamless experience when they start up. Don't forget that Windows 10 also includes Hyper-V. So if you have that machine or that app that still runs on Windows 7 and needs Windows 7, well, the opportunity is to run it on a Windows 10 machine running Hyper-V. So that is possible as well. All right, so Microsoft 365 Business added a range of features in April. All right, so the features that it added was advanced threat protection, which is generally a $2.00. $2.50 add-on to most use, uh, included Windows exploit guard enforcement, data loss prevention, so data loss prevention, for example, prevents the leaking of things like tax file numbers and Medicare numbers outside the organisation. We get the full Azure AD, uh, sorry, Azure Information Protection P1, so this allows us basically to put rights management on our documents. We get Intune to manage all our devices as mentioned. You get unlimited uh, inboxing, so basically the Exchange Online archiving We'll extend the standard 50 gig of a mailbox to effectively an unlimited option, and we get BitLocker enforcement as well. Now, we've also got the ability now to support hybrid. Okay, so Microsoft 365 Business initially was not so favorable to hybrid, but they have included that support since April. So the idea here is to have a look at the stack that you're using today around device management, archiving, security, AV, and all that. And potentially, like I said, the Microsoft 365 business is aimed at a solution that may be able to uh, reduce some of those requirements for third-party options and give you additional features. And again, the price, the RRP price is around $28 per user. We can mix and match as required uh, between our SKU. So some users can have Office 365 or they can have just an exchange online and other users can have Microsoft 365 business. So again, works in the same sort of scheme. Available by CSP, so all of that is, again, very similar to the way it's always been. So this is, I suppose, the money slide. This is going to uh, show you the cash features. The slides will be available after the event so that you can look at this in detail. You'll see that Office 365 Business Premium is around $18. Microsoft 365 Business is only about $10 more. And you'll see that you get Microsoft Stream, which does the video conferencing. You get advanced threat protection which will do the email hygiene, you'll get data loss prevention, you'll get Intune, so everything in blue there is the add-ons. And then if you want to, there is the uh, Microsoft 365 E3 and the E5 that are also available and bundle those security and device management products uh, together for you. Well, I think with that, I've done my intro. Hopefully everybody's got a bit more information about the Microsoft 365 business product.